Welcome to the AI Guy Show. Today, we're going to talk about something very different, and I don't know what to really think about it. It's OpenAI's <laughs> robot. They have used the OpenAI model with newer networks and then tying it into an actual robot technology. So it looks like three layers of technology it's using. And the only way to really explain this is Juwan and I are going to watch this video and make comments afterwards. Anything you want to talk about before you want jump, jump onto the video? Um, nothing. I'm actually ready to get to the video because we've seen text to speech now this speech to speech so so i'm curious to see how this this works all righty let's get started with it and we're gonna do this hey figure one what do you see right now i see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table a drying rack with cups and a plate and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Wow. That's the first word that comes to mind is wow and it's it's human like capabilities i mean from the way it talked mm -hmm. it did it, it incorporate i mean it sounded like a, a not from a voice perspective but from a dialogue perspective you heard it say um <laughs> uh you know like like it i get thought for uh for a second because it was the only edible item on the table and then when it handed him the sort of sensory because he held out his hand, it knew to drop it right there in his hand. That's true. They, yeah. As if they was reaching out to one another. That was a real exchange there. That was pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. What's your thoughts? Yeah, just how he used, I guess, the uh, open AI large language model. And then that was just part of the whole um, process. I guess it had all that knowledge in the LLM of OpenAI to say, okay, an apple's edible um, and, you know, how to, you know, trash needs to be picked up. And Correct. what confuses me is that how does it know that the dishes need to go into the drying rack? Did it just, I assumed it saw that it was other dishes there and it just, I guess, made the assumption that it would go there. Well, it, it said, I think it will go into... So, you know, oh. that was almost like as if it was using context clues, seeing those dishes in there. So I think it goes into that dish rack, I think. So that was that was pretty impressive. 
Yeah, I just, it's amazing how it can sort of go through the open AI to the neural networks and then actually the software that actually helps with the movement of the robot itself. And I can't imagine how much time just to do that um, to program it. And was it sort of something, did you, they specifically have to program it for to do that specific task or see if you could figure it out? I mean, that, that's, that's a great question. I, I would like to know. I mean, when you look at the, the large language models today, we're pretty much asking questions and it's parsing through all the data that's out there and making and providing feedback based off of that. So is that the same situation here? You know, where it's, you give it a scenario, it parses through its endless database of information and make those assumptions or, or make, you know, I mean, that that's, that's just pretty impressive. But I will say, did you see the, huh, the other robots in the back? So figure one was just, must have been the first one, but there's probably a figure two, three, and four out there as well. You know, and, I, and how tall is it? How tall are you? How tall was that gentleman? Because it was almost seeing eye to eye with him. So, but yeah, pretty impressive. Well, and just calling it figure one and figure two and things like that, isn't that kind of funny? That's just sort of so generic, you know? It's, it's, it's Dr. Seuss. Thing one, thing two. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so, I mean... We couldn't use thing one and thing two, so figure one, figure two, and and I wonder with each figure, are they getting smarter? Is it more technology being put in, or is it just across the board? But 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 nonetheless, I, I found that to be quite impressive. Wouldn't mind having one around here today um, to to learn the layout of my kitchen and unload the dishwasher, load the dishwasher, put the dishes up, you know. And so can use the help. Well, and even if you know, this technology comes to fruition in the future is I don't see this being where it's going to be reproduced so much of these robots because you got to maintain them. You've got to make sure they're updated with software. And I just can't imagine the expense is a human. It's still going to be cheaper at some point. Maybe that will be a conversion, but I'm, I don't see it. Yeah, maintenance, maintenance and upkeep, but as far as the updates, they're probably doing that over the air anyhow, you know? Yeah. I mean, so, so, so it's wireless at this point. And um, uh, uh, I, I, I'm seeing where we're going here. I'm seeing the capabilities of this technology, um, and it, it takes me to iRobot. It makes me think of, of that movie, especially the design. You know, I mean, it wasn't, it's some, it was some stiffness there. You know, you can see how it was maneuvering. So it wasn't fully functional like the iRobot, but, but nonetheless, it's impressive. Yeah, it seems like OpenAI is in a lot of different little spaces that they're trying to leverage their technology that, you know, not just what we're doing, integrating it to workflows and different types of things in our um, daily life is like, can this be leveraged into robotics? And that's a whole different area itself. It's Correct. amazing. It's just scary. <laughs> I honestly look at it and, and it has that scary component to it. If it's deployed in combat, mm -hmm. you know, you're not losing human lives any longer. It's just right. technology. It's scary. I, I see Terminator go through those entire series you know, from when Arnold was playing and I'll be back and he came back and he just was a good guy. But nonetheless, when you look at the, the, the revolt and, you know, the machines that were out there scanning for human, you know, it's, you just never know where is this going to go. Not at all. And we're excited about, you know, bringing content. I would love for people to like our particular show. Also subscribe and definitely what are your thoughts? Let's put um, your thoughts to our comment section. We respond to all comments out there, positive, negative, and give us, um, we'll give you our thoughts for sure about what your, um, any thinking of these particular robots or any other, uh, other type of videos. I think we're up to 35 videos now, I think, Juwan. So we're growing our library day yes. by day. Yes, yes. And I would like to say once again, SLC, subscribe, like, and comment.